Welcome to another video. I got so many questions about things I thought in my head but did not say clearly the first time I solved this problem. So this is the video to answer every question you po could possibly ask about this problem. Now, there's a great skill in math that you need to have because if you know what the answer cannot be, it minimizes your number of guesses and it saves you a lot of time because you know that your answer can't be this, so don't go that way. And when you get an answer, you could always tell if you're correct or wrong. So let's answer all the questions and go quickly to the answer. Let's get into the video. Number one, because this is a fraction, the denominator cannot be zero, so x cannot be zero. And the floor of x cannot be zero. So clearly we know that the number we're looking for is not zero, and it is not a number between zero and one. Because that would make it, if it's a fraction, we know it, that would make it, so we know that x is not between zero and one. I just said that, I didn't write it. Okay, let's put it this way. The floor of x, uh, floor of x is not equal to zero, which implies x is not zero, and x is not on this interval from zero to one. So you can't find x here if you're looking for x. This is not a possible location for x. Make sense? And the only reason, the only thing I just said is because this guy is in the denominator. Okay, let's move on to something different. We also know that x cannot be an integer. Any integer, whether positive or negative. Why would you say that? It's because the floor of an integer is equal to the ceiling of an integer. So both the top and the bottom will be exactly the same thing. So when you divide the top by the bottom, you're going to end up with 1. And when you end up with 1, what you have is 1 plus 2x equals 8. If you move this 1 over, you have 2x will be equal to 8 minus 1, which is 7, and x is 3.5. But we said x is an integer, but this is not an integer. So it's a contradiction. So x cannot be an integer. x cannot be between 0 and 1. So there's a third thing that I also thought in my head, which I didn't say. x cannot be a negative number. Now that's the one that's a little tricky, but let's show you something. Assuming x is a negative number, the floor of x will be a negative number. The ceiling of x will either be a negative number or at most will be zero. Right? Let's do that again. Okay, say x is a negative number, less than zero. Then the ceiling of x will be less than or equal to zero. That's just it. If x is a negative number, then the ceiling, the highest, the number above that negative number, remember it's not an integer, will either be zero, the ceiling will be zero. So pick any negative number, negative 2.5. The ceiling of negative 2.5 is negative 2, is the number above negative 2.5, and the floor of it is negative 3. So both numbers will have to be negative. And when you divide a negative, and let's say, and we say the floor of x, hey, the floor of x, is definitely less than zero. That one is guaranteed. So when you have a number that is negative divided by, so you have the ceiling of x divided by the floor of x is always greater than zero. Or the worse, it will be equal to zero if this is zero. Remember, a fraction is only equal to zero if the top is zero. So this is the best you can get. Your answer is either positive or it is at worst zero. Right? 
So, let's assume that this is a positive number. This fraction is going to end up being positive. You're going to end up with a number that is positive added to 2x and your answer is equal to 8. So this fraction is going to give us a positive. You're going to end up with this. By the time you move this over here, what are you going to get? You're going to get a number that's less than 8. Remember, we've added two positive numbers, so this cannot be bigger than 8. So when you move this positive number over here, you're going to get a number less than 8. Divided by 2, you're going to get x, but x will end up being positive. <laughs> but we said x was negative in our assumption. So that again is a contradiction. So here, you're going to end up with 2x, let's say positive k. Let me just write it as positive k. Okay? Not, let's not use k. R. Okay? So, we're going to go here. It's going to be 8 minus R. And when you divide this, you're going to end up with a positive number because 8 is greater than, than this number because this number which resulted from this, which was positive, or it was 0. So, no matter how you try to change it, every condition shows you that x is not an integer, x is not equal to 0, and x is not negative. So, that's it. And then we can go on and find what x is using our traditional k and k plus 1. So clearly we know that the ceiling of x is greater than the floor of x, because x is not an integer. So based on the previous concepts that we have talked about with the floor and the ceiling, we know that the gap between the floor and the ceiling is a whole number. Okay, so we just say that this is going to be k, and this would be k plus 1, and we can use that to solve it. So we know that, generally, if x is not an integer, then k is less than or equal to x, and x is strictly less than k plus 1. And k is equal to the floor of x and k plus 1 is equal to the ceiling of x. As far as this topic is concerned, these are the facts that you need, nothing more. Now you can find your own way of solving it, but I just like to stay consistent, okay? If you find your own way of solving it, brilliant. But I always assume that following a, a, a set of steps is always a positive. So let's start. Now, from here, we know that we're going to be having k plus 1 over k plus 2x will be equal to 8. And if we isolate 2x, we're going to be having 8 minus k plus 1 over k. Do this algebra yourself, okay? So we're going to end up with 2x is equal to 7k minus 1 over k. And we can divide both sides by 2 so that x is, I can put the 2 here and take this out. So x equals 7k minus 1 over 2k. So we go here and we say that k is less than or equal to x, and x is less than k plus 1. We're going to just take parts of this. We know k is less than or equal to x, so we're going to say k is less than or equal to x. But our x is 7k minus 1 over 2k. Now, I always warn do not cross multiply when you have inequalities. But in this case, I can do it because at the start of this video, I already told you k cannot be a negative number. That's the only reason. Because if k is negative, then you, you get into some trouble because you don't know whether you can change the sign or not when you multiply both sides by k. Okay, you want it to be less than zero. So look, when you sketch the graph of a quadratic, because this is a minimum function that it goes this way. It's a parabola that opens up. Your graph is going to be, let me just say something like this. And you're looking for values that are less than zero. The values that are less than zero that satisfy any quadratic that opens up will always be from here to here. So it is between the two answers that you got. If it's a maximum graph, then you're looking for the answers that are on the outside generally. 
unless you have a weird one which I've never met <laughs> or seen. So that's why I'm not going to worry about um, doing the number line. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve this using quadratic formula. K is minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Well, we're going to use that here. So K is going to be 7 plus or minus the square root of B squared is 49. Minus 4AC is going to be minus 8 all over 2A. 2A is going to be 4. So K is between two numbers. So we can say this is equal to, um, this implies, let's write it this way. 0.15 is less than or equal to k and k is less than or k is less than or equal to 0 is 3.35 3.35 okay so these are the two uh, numbers that bound k remember k is an integer okay and because it's an integer k has to be a number between 0 0.15 and 3.35 which is 1 2 or 3 those are the possible answers so what do we do next? Well, we go use the second part of the inequality. Remember, we just used this part. So now we go here. We know that x is strictly less than k plus 1. So we're going to write k, uh, x in terms of k again. So we know, we say that k, which, I mean, x, 7k minus 1, 7k minus 1 over 2k is less than k plus 1. Again, can I cross multiply? Yes. You know, if I was not a YouTuber, I would be a surgeon or be a medical surgeon just dissecting and fixing things. See what I just did? I love me. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Here, we're going to do this. We're going to solve this and say k using the quadratic formula is going to be 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared is going to be 25 minus 4ac is going to be minus 8 all over 4. So we have k is less than 0 0.2 or k is greater than 2.3. So those are the possible, those are the two values. We've got 0 0.2 and 2.3. Now, which of these is relevant to what we already claimed? Is it possible for k to be in this set? and to be less than 0 0.2? No. Is it possible for k to be in this set and to be greater than 2.3? Yes. Which of the k's will satisfy this condition? It's 3. Is Let's box this. So we know 2.3 is less than k, and k is in this set of 1, 2, and 3. So which one is true? It's just this number. K must be 3. So K is equal to 3. And that's it. And once you've gotten your K to be 3, you can go back and find your X. Where is X? That's X there. Just plug in 3 for K. And whatever you get is your answer. Okay, the final dissection. So we know that X is equal to 7 times 3 minus 1 divided by 2 times 3. Okay, this is 20 minus 1, that, that means 21 minus 1 is 20, 20 divided by 6, x is going to be 10 over 3. This is our final answer, and that's the x we've been looking for. Now, if we plug in this number into this, will we get the same answer? Yes, because if it is 10 over 3, it's 3.33333, right? So the ceiling of 3.333 is 4, and the floor is 3. So 4 over 3 plus 2 times 4 over 3 is equal to 8. You do the math. <laughs> Never stop learning, because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.